In today's video, we're going to look at dimensional analysis in converting between unit systems and to perform calculations that you might see in a clinical setting regarding drug dosages. So first, let's talk about dimensional analysis and the conversion factors. To go from English unit systems to the metric unit system, we need to have certain conversion factors that we know. Now, you can see in Table 1.4 from your text that there are several different English unit metric English relationships that we need to know. I expect, living in the U.S., that you understand most of the English unit equivalences. In other words, one foot is equal to 12 inches, there are three feet in one yard, and so on. Now, the ones you don't know, or might not know, are the metric to English relationships. In the metric to English relationships, there are only a handful that you actually must know. Uh, and the ones that I recommend, recommend you memorizing include the 2.54 centimeters is equal to 1 inch, 1 kilogram is 2.20 pounds, 1 pound is 454 grams, and then I suggest you memorize the liters is 1.06 quarts. With these four relationships and a working knowledge of the English unit system, you should be able to take care of many problems. So let's do the first example here. 12 pounds to grams. I want to use a one-factor conversion to do these first few problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what I'm given, my 12 pounds, and I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. Now, how the conversion factor comes about is we can see we're wanting to get to grams. There is a gram to pound conversion factor. So 454 grams is equal to 1 pound. If I divide both sides by 454 grams, 454 divided by 454 becomes 1. I can do this again if I take the same equivalence, 454 grams is equal to 1 pound, and divide both sides by 1 pound. 1 pound over 1 pound goes to 1. So what we have here are two forms of the conversion factor. The form we want to use depends upon what units we are given and what units we are trying to get. So we are given pounds. So we need to be able to put pounds on the denominator of our fraction. So 1 pound is 454 grams should go on top. When you perform this calculation, your calculator will give you the result of 5,448 grams. But we need to make sure that we follow through with our significant figures. Um, the only defined relationship that we have so that significant figures don't matter in our metric to English relationship is the 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. Everything else actually follows sort of the sig fig rule. So when in doubt, cut to the number of significant figures that you start with. So there's two significant figures in 12 pounds, so my answer should contain two significant figures. So taking 5,448 grams to two significant figures should give me 5,400 grams. Let's continue. 120 miles to kilometers. We're going to take what we're given, the 120 miles, and we want to turn it into kilometers. And this, is, again, is another one-factor conversion. I look at my table and say, um, miles to kilometers, I have a conversion factor to that. One kilometer is equal to 0 0.621 miles. Now, does the miles need to go on the top or the bottom? That's right, we need to put miles on the bottom and kilometers on the top because we want to be able to cancel out the miles. So one kilometer is equal to 0 
621 miles. The result of this calculation gives me 32.206 kilometers, but again, how many significant figures do we need? Right, there's only two in the 120 miles, so 32 kilometers is our answer. To do two quarts to liters, I'm going to take my two quarts, and I'm going to find a conversion factor that gives me quarts and liters. And so we have one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. So when I multiply by my conversion factor, do the quarts need to be on the top or on the bottom? That's right, they need to be on the bottom with liters on the top. So one liter is 1.06 quarts, which when I do this calculation gives me 1.8868 liters. How many significant figures should I have? That's right, I should only have one significant figure because of the two. So my answer should be two liters. This is where the significant figure rules can be kind of strange when we are doing dimensional analysis. Uh, but you just have to remember to follow the rules as we have them stated. Let's try some two-factor conversions. Um, in this one, we're going to go from grams to ounces, 125 grams to ounces. So 125 grams is our given. Now, if we take a look at our mass relationship, um, we have a grams to ounces already. But remember, I had asked you to only memorize a handful. You will not have this table to fall back on. I only want you to know the metric to English relationships that we've previously talked about. And I'll show you, that's really all you need. So to go from 125 grams to ounces, uh, the ones that I told you to memorize were 454 grams is equal to 1 pound, and 1 kilogram is equal to 2.20 pounds. So what I'm going to convert first is... I'm going to convert the grams to pounds. So, does the grams need to go on the top or on the bottom? That's right, on the bottom. Grams on the bottom, pounds on top. One pound is 454 grams. Now I can cancel out the grams, but that is not the final unit I want. I want ounces. Now I look to my English relationship and I see that there's one pound is equal to 16 ounces. So I'm going to put another conversion factor here and ounces is going to go on top, pounds is going to go on the bottom, 16 ounces is one pound. Notice the pounds then cancel and we're left with ounces. Now to do these multi-step problems you might be tempted to do each portion individually, but I say don't do that because then you have to write down all sorts of numbers and it can get confusing. So to do this calculation, type in the 125 in your calculator, and then you would multiply by the top and then divide by the bottom. So multiplying by 1 gives you the same number, so you can then divide by 454. Then you would multiply by 16 and then divide by 1, which again is not necessary but this is how the steps in the problem progress and when you do the calculation and take it to 300 uh, three significant figures we are going to have an answer of 4.41 ounces let's do 35 milliliters to fluid ounces uh, now again I told you that you only had to memorize the liters to quarts. Now, how do I get from liters to quarts then? And how does this affect my milliliters and fluid ounces? Well, first you need to convert your milliliters to liters. Remember, we can do that using our metric prefixes. And so I'm going to write that as liters, 0 0.035 liters. And we can use our 
relationship, one liter is equal to 1.06 quarts. Liters is going to go on the bottom, so one liter and 1.06 quarts on top. Our liters will cancel. And then, to get to fluid ounces, one quart is equal to 32 fluid ounces. So, we would multiply by 32 fluid ounces is one quart. And when we do this calculation, we get 1.2 fluid ounces to two significant figures. Put a box around our other answer so we can see that still. Now, lastly, 120 meters to feet. Well, do I have a meter to foot conversion that I asked you to memorize? No, remember 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. So in other words, I'm going to use my metric prefixes again to convert that meter to centimeters. So 120 meters becomes 12,000 centimeters. Because remember, I'm moving it two more decimal places. Now I'm going to convert my centimeters to inches. So, which goes on top? Centimeters or inches? That's right, inches goes on top, centimeters on the bottom. And one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. My centimeters are going to cancel and I'm left with inches. Now to get from inches to feet, we know that one foot is 12 inches. When we carry out this calculation, we will get to two significant figures, 390 feet. We can also do multiple step conversions. So if I wanted to convert, say, 120 kilometers an hour to miles per second, I could do this. Now, what you want to do is you want to pick one unit and convert it first and then come back and pick up the second unit. So notice kilometers goes to miles and hours goes to seconds. So it doesn't matter where you start just as long as you stay consistent. So I'm going to start first with the kilometers to miles. So I'm going to take 120 kilometers per hour. Notice how I put hours on the bottom. That really means per one hour, right? So I'm going to convert that to the miles. And we can look up here, uh, and I will save you from having to do the complete conversion, but one kilometer is equal to 0 0.621 miles. So one kilometer, 0 0.621 miles. So notice the kilometers are canceled. Now I want to get hours to seconds. So one hour is what? Well, you could know that it's 3,600 seconds, but if you didn't know that, you could say, well, one hour is 60 minutes. And I know that there are, in one minute, 60 seconds. So when I carry this calculation through, look, my minutes cancel, my hours cancel, I'm left with miles per second, and that calculation to two significant figures is 0 0.021 miles per second. Now let's go ahead and do 23 pounds per day to megagrams per year. So 23 pounds per day. And let's take care of the days first. So I know that in one year there are 365 days. So, I can cancel out my days. Now let's do the hard one. Pounds to megagrams. So pounds, I know that in one pound there are 454 grams. But that's not megagrams. So, we can also do the whole metric conversion thing and go, well in one megagram there is 10 to the 6th grams. So let's see what this turns out to be, shall we? To two significant figures, we get 3.8 megagrams 
per year. Because notice, my grams cancel, my pounds cancel, I have years and megagrams there. The key to doing multi-step conversions like this is to just keep plugging away at it using whatever conversions you know. Uh, and if you want to memorize all the metric to English conversions, go for it. Uh, but you can do these with solely the ones that I told you to memorize. Now, we can use dimensional analysis as a problem-solving tool. As a matter of fact, that's really what it's best at. Um, doing these conversions between metric and English units is kind of nice, but if you know what units you want to end up with, you can actually use dimensional analysis to get you there. And all clinical conversions are, are just dimensional analysis problems. So, let's take a look at a typical clinical style conversion. Let's say you have a patient that weighs 185 pounds, and the doctor prescribes a medication that is 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Now, the pharmacy only has 10 milligram pills, so how much medication should the adult have? So, whenever you're doing a problem-solving uh, problem of any sort of uh, any sort of style, you want to make sure you write down what do you know. We know that we've got 10 milligrams is one pill. So 10, 10 milligrams per pill. That's my, my pill size. I know that the patient weighs 185 pounds. And I know that the dosage is given as 0 .8, uh, 0 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body weight. So what this tells me is, first I gotta find out how much does this guy have in kilograms? So I'm gonna take my 185 pounds and I know that for every one kilogram there's 2.20 pounds. Now I could just go ahead and do the math here but trust me it's better if you follow through this method where I'm going to multiply everything through all my conversion factors and all my problems till I get to the end without doing any math until that very last step. So once I've gotten pounds gone, I've got kilograms. Now, let's see. I know that I've got 0 0.5 milligrams per kilogram body, body mass. So kilograms is on the bottom, so one kilogram of the body requires 0.5 milligrams. And then look at what else I've got. I've got 10 milligrams per pill. And what I'm really wanting to find is how many pills? So one pill is 10 milligrams. Now look, kilograms cancel, milligrams cancel. I'm left with the number of pills. And when I do this, the number of pills I get is 1.93 pills if I follow sig fig rules. But let's talk about this for a second. I'm counting the number of pills. So really, what I'm doing here is I'm going to give the patient two pills. What about this style of problem? How much medication is given by IV in a six-hour period if the solution contains 15 grams per liter of the medication and the flow rate of the IV is 0.5 milliliters per minute. So again, we're going to do the exact same sort of setup. We're going to say, what do we know? I know that the time frame is six hours. I know that the amount of medication is 15 grams per liter. And I know that the flow rate of the IV is 0.5 milliliters per minute. So where do we start? Well, let's ask ourselves, what are we really wanting to find? We're wanting to find the amount of medication. How much medication is given? So I'm going to take the conversion factor or the bit of information here that's got the medication. So 15 grams per liter. Now, I need to convert that into milliliters because 
my other conversion factor here doesn't have liters. It has milliliters. Additionally, it's in minutes and not hours. So, I know that my liters needs to be converted to milliliters. So, one liter is 1,000 milliliters. So, the liters are going to cancel. And I know that there's 0 0.5 milliliters per minute. So, 0 0.5 milliliters for every one minute. Now, I know that the time over which the medication is given is six hours. But I've got minutes, so I need to turn minutes into hours. So I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour, and I know that I took six hours. So when I carry through this calculation, I will end up with 2.7 grams. Now, the question becomes, what is the number of sig figs? Well, technically, this flow rate actually gives us a number of significant figures. Uh, so we should really write 3 grams of medication dispensed. Um, again, follow the rules of significant figures, even if they seem a little strange. It's best to follow the rules of sig figs just to be on the safe side. I'm going to leave you with one thought. The only way to get good at doing dimensional analysis problems, or problem solving in general, is to practice, practice, practice. Matter of fact, that might not be strong enough. Maybe you need to practice, 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 or practice, 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 or practice, 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 everything. You need to do a lot of practice. This is not something you can look at and go, oh, I get it, and then never practice. Because it's just like a math class. You have to be able to do the problems in order to understand the material. So I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, j.brinkley at rockvalleycollege.edu.